The Putin panhandlers in the mainstream media know exactly who caused the death threats against Justin Trudeau. Yes, they say it was us. Saturday at a campaign stop in Mississauga, Ontario, Trudeau took the quote-unquote unprecedented step of wearing a bulletproof vest in response to an alleged security threat. The security threat that delayed the Liberal rally for 90 minutes has yet to be identified now days later and no one has been arrested. However, I'm no security expert, but I do, like many lay observers, think it's Kind of bizarre that if the threats were so deadly that Trudeau needed to wear a flak jacket and evacuated his family, why did he not evacuate a crowd of 400 easy liberal targets for this threatened murderer to attack? I also think it's somewhat strange that just one day later with this threatened killer on the loose that Trudeau was just sauntering about through crowds. Now, I'd hate to find out that this was all just a spectacle. Security masterpiece theater and an abuse of our RCMP for political gamesmanship. My many, many questions about the death threats to Trudeau and the handling thereof aside, the mainstream media already knows exactly who's to blame and who's the real bad guy here. And it's you and me. I want to show you a clip from CBC's Power and Politics from Sunday afternoon, just one day after the acknowledgement that Trudeau wore a bulletproof vest to attend a campaign event. The reason I'm pointing this out is that the people on the panel knew even less about the security threats than we do now and we still know next to nothing. And yet speculation and blame began. The woman you are going to see talking is a host for Global and Chorus Radio, 6.40 a.m. in Toronto. Her name is Supriya Dwivedi. Just watch this, and I'll show you her comments in full so she can't go back and accuse me of taking her out of context. Just watch. I do want to get your reaction to, uh, and Supriya, I'll begin with you, sure. the idea of uh, a leader, a federal leader in this campaign having to, you know, face a, or having to wear a bulletproof vest because of a security threat, although the, you know, the RCMP isn't detailing it, but uh, of a security threat so great that that was necessary. What, what does it tell you? Well, it's incredibly worrying, right? And it's incredibly disheartening. Um, unfortunately, however, I don't think it's all that surprising necessarily given um, not just this campaign but just the tone and tenor of political debate in this country for the last few years um, and I don't want to turn this into uh, you know uh, taking partisan shots at the other parties or have this be some sort of petty I told you so moment but this is particularly why when you have you know one party that is spreading misinformation on something like a simple motion to condemn Islamophobia like M103 or you have the yellow vesters that are you know on their Facebook page are regular Uh, putting out death threats to the um, Prime Minister, calling him a traitor, calling him treasonous. Um, This is exactly why when you have associations and and you refuse to to denounce um, an outlet like the rebel, um, it it becomes incredibly worrying. And and I know that um, Mr. Scheer did once um, Charlottesville had happened, but, you know, he didn't when they sent a reporter out to on some sort of conspiracy theory fact-finding mission after the uh, Quebec City mosque shooting. Um, This is unfortunately the, uh, the somewhat natural natural progression of these sorts of debates that we've been having and with w- without you know saying that there's um, I, I, I think without saying that one party has a monopoly on crazies of course because no party does I think this is why it's incredibly important to call out hate and to call out unacceptable you know rhetoric and and and, and threats as they happen in real time. Dwivedi says she doesn't want to make any of this partisan or political and then she goes on to blame apropos of no proof whatsoever, who she thinks the main culprits of the threats against Justin Trudeau are. Conservatives who like free speech, rebel news, and the yellow vests. Now, in reality, the recent political threats and violence directed at the liberals are actually coming from the far left. Just a couple of weeks ago, at the climate march, a man was arrested and then charged with assault for throwing eggs at the prime minister. The man was a climate marcher. And in August, a protester with the far left-wing environmentalist group Extinction Rebellion was arrested for trying to arrest Catherine McKenna for climate crimes. He had zip ties on him. But the poutine panhandlers in the mainstream media are not ones to let facts get in the way of a good narrative. Now, are they? Let's look at the facts. 
At Rebel News, we are not advocates for political violence. We are overwhelmingly the recipients of political violence, the most assaulted and censored journalists in all of Canada. I was assaulted at the Women's March by a male feminist NDP activist named Dion Buse. Kean has had his camera broken. He's been followed and shoved by far left-wing activists and Antifa. One of our videographers is routinely jostled around by lefties. David Menzies was attacked by a hotel manager in Toronto last Wednesday to create and contrive controversy. We watched City News reach out to Antifa on Twitter for comment about Ezra Levant's Lebrano's book signing. Let me put it another way. A local news outlet lit the torches of an online violent deplatformer hate mob to come and attack us over a book. And at the book signing on Thursday, some lunatic stood on the street and shouted that I was the B word into local news cameras. And he did his best to get at me to get to me, to do God only knows what if we hadn't paid for private security to keep us safe. And all these assaults and attacks on us, well, they happen on camera. At Rebel News, we are the recipients of political violence. We are not the cause and we are not the perpetrators. And unlike our colleagues in the mainstream media, we will even go one step further. We are free speech advocates because we believe that it is always wrong to meet political speech with violence. Rather, it must be met with more political speech. When people threaten us with violence, when our colleagues in the mainstream media whip up the deplatformer mob to shut us down, we show up unafraid to offer more free speech in the face of the threats against us. And we are not going to stop. While some comfortable bailout uniform hack uses a taxpayer-funded platform at the CBC to lie about us and about who we are and what we do, we're taking the fight to make speech freer for everyone, including our would-be censors and bullies. But we need your help to do it. Please go to stopdeplatforming.com. There you'll see our plan to sue the anti-free speech bullies to stop their authoritarian plans to ban you from neutral places you used to have the right to go. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreed. To see our plan to sue the deplatformers, the censors, and the bullies, go to stopdeplatforming.com. And there you can pitch in to cover our costs to take the legal fight to them. Again, that's at stopdeplatforming.com.